he bought a Terminator like three days before the event. And I sent him a tune, he loaded it with the SD card, and a little bit of messing with his boost controller, he went 10-0 oh, in wow. a 4,000 pound Dakota with an LS swap. I'm with Matt Happel, the sloppy mechanic, and we're out here at LS Fest. He brought the 8s for 8 Mustang out to LS Fest this year. Everything worked great with the Terminator system. It came up on, uh, I targeted 26 and I got the closed loop settings good, so it came right up and hit 27 and went right to 26 and then promptly exited the rods out of the front of the engine. Yeah, so everything worked great. It's just the mechanical stuff couldn't hand up to, you know, yeah, all of that. So the, uh, just, just for anybody that's not familiar, what, what's up with this car? Uh, the whole basis behind the car is a budget build, so we wanted to go as fast as we could for not exactly as cheap as we could, because this is a little bit of a different direction. Normally I build like a burnout car that inadvertently goes fast, so I thought it'd be cool to build a drag car that's fairly cheap, but also this has like 90% of the safety equipment it needs. I'm not usually known for that, so uh, what I wanted to do is prove to people you can build like a practical fast car for a small budget. So you ended up doing bought this Mustang as a roller. 1900 bucks. Already had some pretty good parts. Yeah, it's, it. the, uh, it's funny, people will, the, the stuff ends up costing more than people think. They aren't realistic yep. or they, they just start snowballing costs or they buy things they don't need. It happens a lot. I mean, that's basically like what my channel is all about is uh, people learn what they don't need. People will tell you stuff you don't need all the time and you run out of money and you're like, I'm not done. So uh, we wanted to build the car to go eights for, in the, in the eight second range for in the 8,000 range. So uh, partway through the build, I was like, this is going to be unrealistically cheap. So I started throwing products on the car <laughs> to, to kind of future-proof it or show people, like, you don't have to be that stingy. And uh, we plan to upgrade the car. There's a path for it. Once it goes eights for in the $8,000 range, we want to try all the other Holly products and see how good they are and how what, what it does as far as adding it. Because a lot of people, if they have the money, they throw the book at it. And uh, it'd be nice to know, like, for certain combinations, whether or not something is good or not. So that's yeah. what we plan to do with it. So you've got a 4.8 junkyard motor. It's a 99 long crank 4.8. It's running uh, like my, we call it my camshaft. It's a camshaft Elgin cut in like the late 90s, but I have found it as a good budget cam. Uh, it's only a $500 long block. Right. So that's a $200 engine and a $300 cam and springs. Not bad. And it made a little over 800 to the tire. Well, we've made over 1500 rear wheel with a stock plastic intake and stock iron manifolds. Wow. So there's really no need. People built, people put like the shiny, pretty forward ones on. All it does is burn your spark plugs and take up room in the engine bay and overheat everything in there. So <laughs> it's much easier if you look down in the engine bay, it's like really easy to reach. You can almost stand in there and do stuff, so. So that's something else. Uh, I know you've spent a lot of time tuning on Holly EFI stuff, uh, factory ECUs, yes. and some other standalone stuff. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about using, say, a factory ECU or something else versus using Terminator X or Dominator or any Holly. So what's nice about the Holly products are the software is almost all 100% the same. The ECUs act almost 100% the same. So once you learn one of them, it's extremely easy. On top of that, uh, the complexity isn't there. You don't have to fool like an emissions device. You don't have to learn how to, you're like, well, this ECU does crazy things and I have to, do. you just tell it what you want it to do and it does it. Mm -hmm. And majority of the functions have what's called closed loop where you can tell it what you want and it helps you attain that target also. Right. So it's not working against you, it's, it's helping you the whole time. If anybody wants to know more about what you do, the car, any of your other builds, where oh, can okay, they go? Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of people don't realize it's like multifaceted, but sloppymechanics.com is just like a placeholder for some of the links. There's links from sloppymechanics.com to a Google wiki page, and it shows a lot of our popular combos or combos that did well, and it's like an entire list of the simple yeah. setup for the car, what I put into it, and everything else, and a lot of that stuff I even have tune files available for them. So if you build a clone of it and you load the tune, you're 90% there. All right, man. Well, yeah. we appreciate you coming out and uh, oiling down the track a little yeah, bit. Just a little. Yeah. Just a fine <laughs> mist.